Welcome to the 2016 School Board Candidate Forum for the Midland Public Schools. It's co-sponsored by the Midland Branch of the American Association of University Women and the Midland Area League of Women Voters. The American Association of University Women empowers women and girls through advocacy, education, philanthropy, and research. The League of Women Voters is a national, nonpartisan political organization open to all citizens, both men and women. It is committed to the informed and active participation of citizens in government. Neither organization supports nor opposes candidates. I am Mary Crane Fronick. I am the president of the Midland Branch of the American Association of University Women, also called by its acronym AAUW. And I will serve as your moderator tonight. Kim Steinke and Judy Donahue, members of both AAUW and the League of Women Voters, will be our official timekeepers. <laughs> Second, <coughs> I want the audience to refrain from any vocal re Excuse me. I lost my page. Apologize. We are pleased to meet and hear from eight candidates vying for four four-year positions. I want to welcome the candidates from, from left to right. We have Mary Friedel, challenger. Jerry Wasserman, incumbent. Brad Blasey, challenger. Scott McFarland, incumbent. Michael Knopf, challenger. Yvonne Gordon, incumbent. Kurt Yachty, challenger. And Lynn Baker, incumbent. We hope that what you hear and see tonight will help you decide how to vote in the upcoming election on Tuesday, November 8th. Each of the candidates will have one minute for an opening statement. After all have spoken, I will pose a series of questions. Candidates will be allotted a one and a half minute response. At the request of any candidate, I will repeat the question on the floor. As each candidate responds, our timer will raise a warning card when 30 seconds remain, when 15 seconds remain, and a final stop card when time is up. When time is up, I will stop the speaker, allowing only for the completion of the sentence. <coughs> After the question and answer period, each candidate may give a one minute closing statement. The candidates participated in a drawing to determine the order in which they will speak. The order will be maintained and rotated throughout the program. Before we start, I have just a couple of ground rules to cover. Of course, the first one is, everyone please turn off your cell phones. <laughs> Second, the audience will please refrain from any vocal reactions for or against any candidate or statements made by the candidate, and to applaud only when the moderator has announced that the forum has ended. Now, down to business. We're going to start off with opening statements. Mary Friedel has drawn the privilege of being first to give her opening statement. Mary, you have the floor for one minute, then you will be followed by the remaining candidates according to the order of the drawing. Now, let's see. Okay, Mary. Oh, please. <laughs> Time starts. Time starts. Uh, I am um, a retired teacher from Midland Public Schools. I had a 23-year career here. I'm a, um, a mother of two who both went to public high schools and graduated from public universities here in, in, Mid er, in Michigan. Um, I have four grandchildren, two who are in Midland Public Schools right now, and the youngest one will be in the new STEM <coughs> elementary school as a kindergartner next year. Um, my educational background and experience as a science teacher, as a lead teacher, and a former Clare City Commissioner all contribute to my qualifications to serve um, on the Board of Education for Midland Public Schools. I'm passionate about providing the best learning environment for students, maintaining excellence, the excellence that's synonymous with Midland Public Schools. Thank you, Mary. Jerry, your turn. Thank you. Education is my passion. I've served on the board for 13 years. I serve as the chairman of Case Western Reserve University School of Engineering's uh, advisory panel. Uh, I tutor at the Legacy Center, and I've had two children, that grad or three children, that graduated from Midland Public Schools. And I see Dick Dolinsky here, and I'm proud to say he's supporting me in my reelection for school board. 
Demographics have reduced our pseudo cop by 25% and nearly doubled our economic at risk population, which resulted in our near <coughs> financial calamities over the last five years that every 10 years everybody's familiar with. But our staff students community have rallied. We stabilized the finances, sound management, and sacrifices by all the employees. By design, we insulated the students from these changes. Outcomes are as strong as ever, as demonstrated by several years of test data and other data. But as they say, if you're not growing, you're dying. And so I want to take us to the next level of achievement by four things. Successfully implement our STEM strategic plan, especially next year at the new elementary school. Change our middle school approach dramatically start, uh, and to be real class. Increase early intervention with our very young students and be great <coughs> stewards of our taxpayers' money and foundation's money. We've done it before. We can continue to do it again. Thank you, Jerry. Brad, it's your turn. <coughs> My name is Brad Blazy. I'm a second generation lifelong Midland resident, currently raising the third. So my time would be an investment in the kind of school district I'd like my own sons to attend for a very long time since they're young. I'm a graduate of Midland Public Schools and Central Michigan University. I'm a State of Michigan licensed master electrician and an electrical contractor. I have 20 years of experience with difficult decision making as a vice president of a local business and I believe I can be of benefit considering the ongoing financial challenges and responsibilities of school funding. I have 16 years of board experience with the Greater Michigan Construction, or excuse me, with Greater Michigan Chapter of ABC, as well as the Greater Michigan Construction Academy. In several of those years, I was elected by my peers as chairman of the board, and have been through many challenges with the building purchase, uh, merger with other chapters, and splitting our business operations. Um, I'm a son of Midland, and I, I would be both honored and humbled to give back what Midland has given to me. Thank you, Scott. Your Thank comments. You. All right. Uh, my name is Scott McFarland. I'm currently the Secretary of the Board of Education. Uh, my wife and I have lived here with our children for five years. Uh, we have four children, three in the district, and one making his way into the district. Um, I said this last night, and just to give you the executive summary, everything uh, I believe can be distilled down to this, and that is kids come first, period. I'm running for re-election because I want to make sure our district remains laser focused on student achievement across the board, and that we're producing smart, independent, global thinkers who can successfully compete in a highly competitive 21st century jobs environment or academic institution. I also want to make sure our district continues on its current path of success and that we remain vibrant, financially sound, and that we remain a beacon of educational excellence both regionally and at the state level. Thank you. Michael? My name is Michael Knopf and uh, I am a retired uh, administrator from parochial education. Um, I have two children who have graduated from Midland High, and I also have uh, a granddaughter who is at uh, uh, um, Carpenter. And uh, my background has included being a teacher, um, a uh, principal, a superintendent, and I have also had the opportunity in my retirement to work at Dow High School as a paraprofessional. So I uh, cover all of the ranges from uh, para, para pro up to uh, superintendent. Um, I understand the joys and challenges that are going on in our schools by, by working in them. Um, I do believe that with my background in finance curriculum, uh, in staffing, discipline, and uh, parent and community relationships, that I will be a, a good uh, addition to this board. Thank you. Yvonne, <coughs> your statement. Thank you. My name is Yvonne Gorton. I've been on the, serving on the Board of Education for the past five years. I live in Midland. I've lived here almost 20 years. I have two daughters, both of whom are Midland High graduates. One is also an MSU graduate, and the other one is a senior at Michigan State University. I'm employed by the Michigan Department of Corrections, and uh, what I do for the Department of Corrections is coordinate their performance audit efforts. So I audit correctional facilities for policy compliance. So my work takes me from the top of Michigan to the bottom and lots of points in between. For the last five years, I've had the pleasure of serving on this board, and I have learned tremendously. When I got elected, we were facing a really painful time of having to ask for concessions. And as I look back on that now, I think it could have been so much worse. I was amazed at how everyone worked together. Um, staff and teachers even found great ways to cut expenses, and we managed to get through that. Um, not painlessly, but it could have been much worse. I would like to continue to be part of this awesome team of teachers, administration, so on. Thank you. Thank you. Kurt, please. I started in Midland when I was in sixth grade, and 
went through high school here, left, went to Michigan State, and then went to law school. Um, but from the first day I got to Michigan State until this afternoon, I've been a volunteer coach um, at Midland High School. Now, in the early years, I didn't do much coaching because I didn't know anything, but <laughs> I knew that I didn't know anything, and so I listened carefully to those that did. One of the things that I would like to be able to do for the public schools is to bring that sense of uh, collaboration, because in my conversations with a number of the teachers in the in the uh, in the community, they feel as if they've lost that sense of collaboration. Um, in my view, that uh, we have to find a way to find additional revenue, and we have a very um, strong group of staff members that could help us do that. Thank you. And that brings us to Lynn. Thank you. Thank you for having us here tonight. Uh, when people ask why I'm running for a seat on the Board of Ed again, I tell them I just continue to be excited about uh, the future of education here at MPS and the role that um, I can play in that, in that. I actually have an education degree. I, too, graduated from Midland High many years ago, and uh, I understand the important role that quality education plays in our students' future. I'm also active in... Um, many other organizations that involve children, uh, Girl Scouts, Church, the, I'm on the Midland Camping Council Board, Community Center, and uh, my husband and I, I have five children who are MPS grads, and they felt they were very well prepared when they went off to school. One more, one more year to go, and then they're on their own. So uh, I've attended many uh, state board of ed conventions and continue to take continuing ed classes so that I can stay current. And if, although we've been through many challenges, I'm glad to be back to help. Thank you. Now, let's begin hearing your answers to the questions that we will be of, <coughs> that we think will be of interest to our voters on election day. Jerry, we'll take your response to this first question. Describe an ideal Midland Public School board member. What are your goals as a board member? Well, I stated my goals in my opening statement uh, for, the, for the next four years. Uh, the overarching goal is a great educational experience for every kid. And I've come to realize, if, being in the district so long, that's a big challenge. Every kid does not come from the same circumstance. Every kid isn't blessed with the same parents. Every kid isn't blessed with the same backgrounds. So how do we do that? Uh, STEM is going to be a way of the future. An ideal board, to your question, an ideal board member has great ideas, listens, collaborates, and when boards make decisions, everybody's unified behind that board decision. You don't, you don't, you're not a manager. You're not hired to run the district. You are hired to represent the community, hire CEOs who hire people to do great jobs. And uh, that's what a good board member does. A bad board member is just the opposite. Uh, but th those, the really good ones, have a good pulse in the community, different aspects of the community, not just the athletic community, not just the academic community, not just the business community, but all aspects of the community have to be represented, and a good board member is listening to all of them. Um, the other thing a good board member does is go out and get trained. There's significant training by the MASB that teaches the legal ins and outs of school law. That's very important to know. Uh, how to deal with public relations so you don't cause problems for the districts with inadvertent comments, etc. So someone who's willing to be trained, willing to spend the time, and willing to listen to a lot of different people out in the community. Thank you. Brad, same question. <clears throat> well, it would be my goal and or anybody's goal as part of this board uh, to work with the other board members, work with the teachers, the parents, the administration, and all stakeholders to build a sustainable world-class school system. Um, it requires vision, communication, team building, thinking outside the box, fiscal responsibility, transparency, accountability, and a lot of hard work. And I think one of those key things is the fiscal responsibility of really diving into this to see how can we make this school district better. <clears throat> Scott? I think by the time you get to the end of the role, you're not going to hear very many original answers. <laughs> um, I agree. 
really with a lot with what Jerry said. Brad had some great points as well. Uh, to add to that, I think it's important to be honest with your stakeholders and not make promises that you can't keep um, and not tell people what you think they want to hear, but to be honest and tell them how it is uh, when they ask you. Um, it's important to have integrity and to deal with problems head on uh, in a collaborative effort. Um, and I think as a board currently, uh, we've done that very successfully. Um, it's important to get training and to understand the best practices and the roles of a board member and that uh, and to understand that we are not managers as board members, we are simply policy makers. Uh, so those, along with everything else that's been said, I think are all great characteristics of a board member. Thank you. Um, one of the things that um, I've really appreciated about boards is when uh, they have been uh, involved in, in discussing issues, offering input, collaborating, working towards uh, a common goal. Um, it seems to me that we have uh, the, the role as a board member to, to back the school district um, as, as much as we possibly can and to be a voice out there in the community. Um, I also think that it's important for us to understand what's going on in the schools and uh, I would propose that it would be a great thing for board members to have time uh, when invited to go into schools to be uh, a part of um, uh, the programs or witness the programs and, and get a full and, and real good understanding of what's going on in there. Um, I believe I mentioned collaboration. I think that that's important and I do think that it's also important that everything is centered around the idea that students and, and, and their achievement is number one. Thank you. Yvonne. I think it's important to be a strong supporter of the Midland Public Schools. I think it's also important to recognize that you're not here to work on your own. You're here to be part of a team. That's extremely important. And as Scott said, I think this is a great team. I have very much enjoyed working with this team. I think you have to be willing to learn a lot. There's a lot to learn. And I think that you have to also, as Scott said, recognize you can't be all things to all people. There's no point in telling people what they want to hear. I think the best thing you can do is listen to people and encourage them to believe, make them believe you have their concerns at heart, but you can't let people think that you can do everything they want because it doesn't work that way. So I think it's important to be a strong supporter, to be willing to learn, to be willing to work with other people. That doesn't mean that you can't have your own opinions and that you can't voice them. I've felt free at times to say, I'm not sure about that. But in the end, as Jerry said, when the group makes a decision, I support it. So I think being a strong supporter of the Midland Public Schools and the efforts of the board, recognizing the contributions of everyone involved, uh, the teachers, the staff, and really valuing those things and recognizing the community that you live in and what you get from them, I think you have to really keep a good outlook, keep a positive attitude, and be assured that you're working for the best for all students. I have been on um, boards for 35 years, and I have uh, served in a number of capacities. I created them, I served on them. I've been counsel to boards, been counsel to uh, school districts in the past. And uh, my view of the ideal board member is first, independence. And while I agree with collaboration, if you're not thinking independently, uh, you're not serving the role. You, you need to bring what you know and what you think to bear. And if you're not doing that, if you are going along, if you are part of the 7 or 0 votes that happen all the time, I wonder how independent that is. Um, I think that uh, the administration needs to answer to the board and not the reverse. And I think that there has to be the accountability on the part of the uh, administration to the board. And again, not the reverse. So once those things are in place, I think that you have a board <coughs> member who's going to try to move the district forward. And all of those ideas that you have all mentioned are, of course, um, central to having the school district that we all would like to have. The downside to our situation has not been described, and that is there's not a lot that school districts can do about revenue. Um, but that doesn't mean there's nothing that can be done about revenue, and I'm concerned that there isn't a lot of thought about that. Thank you. Annie? 
goals and um, characteristics of a school, uh, board member, I always put students first. And um, no matter what we try to decide, we really need to remember that we are here for them. And what we do, uh, the classroom comes next. And some of those decisions can be very difficult, but we always, I always feel that a board member needs to keep that goal in mind. Uh, it's important to listen, communicate, get involved, be visible so that people um, can share their ideas with you and we can bring them back and talk with those uh, ideas amongst each other. And as we um, begin, training as has been mentioned here is so important and I know for me, as I mentioned earlier, going to these conferences and, and the continuing education for a board member is so important. The state and the legislature and education changes almost daily. So it's important to stay uh, up to date on that and share that with each other. And also fiscal responsibility, uh, which ties into so much of what we do. We need to keep our curriculum current. We need to have our, make sure our teachers are well trained and, um, and our buildings are safe and up to date. So I think that we all have to work together to do all those things. And um, as I said, the goal needs to be what's best for our students first. Thank you. That brings us to our last candidate to speak on this question, and that is Mary. I like being last. <laughs> I can hear everybody else's responses. Um, Midland, Midland Public Schools is about creating lifelong learners, and I think as a board member, you have to be a learner. You have to understand. Um, you have to be a good listener and follow, um, uh, follow up what you hear and what the topics are with research. And like Lynn says, that extra schooling um, that's provided, um, being, being available to go to those conferences, researching the issues, collaborating together here, and, and making the decision in the best interest of, of kids is what's most important. I think that um, uh, a good learning environment for, for our students um, comes from, from buildings that are maintained, buildings that are safe, and happy staff. And uh, so we have to be good listeners. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. We're going to take us to. Uh, get that one. This is our second question, and we're going to start off with Brad. And you're going to have one and a half minutes again, and the question is. What are your must-be-protected priorities for the Midland Public School budget? I guess that I would have to be more in tune with the full budget. I have studied past budgets. I have studied the forecasted budgets. But I can tell you that the bottom two are <coughs> taking away from the students and the educational experience of the students as part of things that I would not cut in our budget. And we also have to make sure that we have safe facilities all at all uh, facilities and schools throughout the district. So that would be something else I would not be willing to cut either. So I would rather focus on those two that must not be touched and or increased. Thank you. Scott? Would you mind repeating the question? What are your must be protected priorities for the MPS budget? Uh, the single, I guess, priority would be maintaining our balanced budget. Um, we achieved that in 2015-16 uh, for the first time in five years, coming from a forecasted uh, massive spending deficit. Um, we achieved a balanced budget again in 2016-17 uh, to the point where we are actually uh, rehabbing our fund balance. Uh, which at this point I think is critically low. Um, so we need to protect our fund balance to make sure that we as a district remain solvent and financially stable. Uh, as far as maybe infrastructure goes, we have a bond that is lined up to deal with that, uh, to deal with the aging buildings, to deal with the security issues, to deal with the electrical infrastructure, to deal with our technology. Um, so I don't, I don't know that that is a, would be a, a really big priority in, in terms of budget because there's money already set aside for that. But uh, just maintaining our, our current path uh, toward a balanced budget, I think, is critical. Thank you. Yeah. Michael? Um, the, the most important uh, 
item for students to be able to learn is a good teacher and we have to focus on maintaining a great teaching staff and we have to be able to attract them um, and uh, keep them well compensated in order to be able to uh, provide uh, for our students. The other thing that I see as being very critical and, and I'm pleased to see that the bond was passed, um, but I do see school safety as something that really needs to be um, stepped up. Um, currently in working at Dow High, I, I see a building with 40 some odd doors and we need to have something that's going to be uh, done to make sure that, um, that we don't have access uh, for outsiders to get into that building easily. We need to have, have some monitoring going on there. Um, students need to feel safe and uh, they, that those would be my, my two priorities. Thank you. <coughs> so I think my two priorities would coincide with what Scott said. Over the past five years that I've been on this board, we've been very fiscally responsible. Uh, when I got elected to this board, there was something like $11 million in the fund balance. That seemed like a lot of money, but of course we've seen what's happened to that over the last five years. But I think that this school system has done an excellent job of being fiscally responsible. And we've been able to, and this is my second on my must-have list, to continue high quality programming. And that does involve the best teachers we can employ and um, just providing, and we've done more than just maintaining, we've, we've done more things for our students. This year we were able to offer um, computing devices, Chromebooks, and many of our, most of our students have them. J just things like that I think are, I want to be able to continue to do that, to offer those great learning opportunities and those great um, assets to our students. I want to be able to keep doing that over time. And it does involve being very fiscally responsible. And I think we've done a good job of that, but we have to continue that. Thank you. Sorry. Well, I couldn't agree more about safety and what a low priority it has seemed <coughs> that it has been. Um, having been on boards of companies where we had to take very seriously how we were going to understand what's access and how do people get in and out of buildings and how can we make sure that the right people are in and the wrong people are not. I don't, unfortunately, I don't see that as having had the focus that I think we should have. Um, and the second thing that I think has to be protected, although there's more in the two, but uh, I would say technology. I think that in the companies um, for whom I've worked and been on boards, um, the students that are able to deal immediately with the technology that the companies already have uh, do very well, and they do well quickly. Um, and those that are not um, oftentimes don't even get the opportunity to be employed. So I think those are two very important ones. Um, with my last 15 seconds, I would throw in, I agree with uh, financial stability. Obviously, you have to um, make sure that you're being um, careful and reasonable with the funds that you are provided. And, but I also have a very strong belief in extracurricular activities because there are some things today in practice, I would tell you a long story, but I don't have time, about how students in those settings learn from what they just did that day with their coaches and their, their other players that is uh, hard to replicate inside of uh, the classroom. Thank you. Lynn, your turn. Okay, the <coughs> top protected priorities, uh, I would say it would have to be a balanced budget, which we have worked so hard for. In my, in my 15 years on the board, which doesn't seem like it should be that long, we have just made had to make so many reductions, and a lot of that is due to things that are out of our control, especially uh, dealing with uh, what the state mandates us to do and now uh, how we fund our schools. So it is exciting to see that we're getting to a point now where we're putting money back into the fund balance and we have a balanced budget and our curriculum and our schools still perform very well. We have excellent staff 
and as our um, disadvantaged pop economically disadvantaged population has increased, our budget gets uh, more and more challenged. We have a higher special uh, education population, and so to really watch our budget so that we can provide the best education for all our students. My um, other top priority, as I said before, is the classroom and it is the students. So that uh, if we have a budget, we can keep our great curriculum uh, and our STEM school, PYP, all the things that we keep adding, great teachers and um, professional development for our teachers. Any questions? Mary? Um, I agree the importance of physical responsibility, the fiscal responsibility, and I know that um, the board had faced the $6 million lump sum pullout that uh, the state said we need that money and we need that money now that wasn't planned for, and they've done a great job of doing that. Um, I understand that the, um, the monies are already budgeted in the bond for the various aspects that have been addressed uh, by others. Um, I just want to make sure that we're not getting over budget on some of the, the initiatives that are happening right now and we um, uh, fail to have the funding that's needed for the safety. Um, renovations for labs at the high school that are in disrepair and are unsafe. Um, the, the in and out of the building uh, safety <coughs> issues. Um, and I think that part of it is um, in order to maintain the quality that we have, we have to be um, attracting those teachers that are going to be strong teachers and you don't do that unless you have good competitive salaries. And uh, so that would be a priority for me as well. Thank you. And Gary. Well, through the years, the approach I've seen and the boards have taken is think of this thing as concentric uh, circles, teacher, student in the middle. Everything else is ancillary to support that. Every dollar spent is ancillary to support that. And the least direct, the, the more, the lesser direct it has an impact on that, the more prone we were to save the money. So the farther away you got. That's why we contracted custodials. That's why we contracted uh, food service. Those kind of things. So the core was that, and then you worked your way outward. Grants are an interesting thing, and additional revenue is an interesting thing. We are giving X dollars by the state. You have no local control over our operating money other than to reduce it. We cannot increase it from a taxation standpoint. Grants and grant right and grant grantors do not give money for operating expenses. They give money for projects, for implementations of new things, of new ways of doing things, and expect you to carry the ball after that. I would challenge that Midland Public Schools has been a very fortunate district with the amount of grant money we receive from our local foundations. Some of the tops in the state, and we've been able to do IB with that, uh, both elementary and high school, and we're about to do STEM with that. So that's been very successful and will continue, and those relationships are very vital to our district, and how we manage that money is very vital to our credibility with those foundations. Security is at the core, one of the major reasons on the millage. I was out on the stump for the millage. Uh, we're spending that money. We spent the first year designing the systems, and this year they're being implemented. For all the things that Mr. Knopf was concerned about at Dahai, we'll start seeing those things over the next year. Now that they're designed and ready to go, and uh, the very highest thing we can do is that security with our bond money. Thank you. Okay, this leads us to our third question, which is going to be answered first by Scott. What is your vision for the evolving curriculum of the STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and the need to keep Humanities in the mix. I think it's critical to keep humanities and arts in the mix with STEM. Uh, there's a lot of interplay between, uh, between the two. We, as a district, have wonderful partnerships with our foundations, with local companies, with local businesses, and universities. Uh, Saginaw Valley, Delta, Northwood, Michigan State, Michigan Tech, um, all play roles in our district in establishing an evolving curriculum. Um, so it's, it's critical in terms of maintaining those relationships, and I think uh, collectively as a board and with our administration and our teachers, we have a great working relationship uh, to further those and to keep our curriculum relevant and evolving, uh, especially in a STEM aspect. Thank you. Michael? One of the uh, things I was looking at uh, a little bit earlier is the idea of STEAM, which is um, science, technology, uh, engineering, arts, and math. And uh, Ann Arbor Public Schools 
uh, has adopted that. And it's, uh, it's interesting to, to see that being uh, something that is uh, being undertaken by them. I think we have an opportunity to learn from other school districts, um, but they are um, using that uh, in a project-based situation uh, for learning. And it seems to me that you can't have just STEM. You have to have the arts involved. And it, it also is something that, um, uh, as I look at, at kids who are going to school, um, their passion uh, might be the saxophone. Um, it might be um, clay. It might be um, the wood shop. And we've got to have all of those things involved as well as uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. Well, I would definitely agree with all the things that have been said. Um, I think that academics and arts and athletics are all part of the package. They all work together. Students learn from their involvement in arts and in athletics, as well as in the classroom. Students learn things like discipline. They have to practice. They have to they want to learn to succeed and keep achieving. So those things all work together. One of the things I think we really need to do, and what I've really been impressed with the teachers in the Midland Public School System is what experts they are and how they look to the experts when they need, when they have problems to solve or when they need to learn new things. And I'm reminded of when um, Chestnut Hill was designated by our legislature a focus school meaning that there was too big a gap between their highest achievers and their lowest achievers. And so what did Tracy Renfro and her team do? They, they attacked the problem, they studied it, they identified their sort of favorite expert in that field, and they actually had an opportunity to go hear that person speak, and they listened and read what this person advocated, they implemented those things, and within a few years, Chestnut Hill was a national blue ribbon school. So I think we need to listen to our teachers, and this is one of the frustrations I have with the legislatures that they seem to talk to everybody about education other than educators. <laughs> so I think we need to keep that in mind, too. It's good to look at other school systems, but I think we need to listen to our educators. Thank you. Bert. I, I very much liked your summary. I thought that, I think that's exceptional. I, I agree. Um, but the depth and the breadth of the school district is not just any of the single things that we've talked about. And they're all very important. I, I couldn't agree more that the uh, technology-based uh, learning is critical these days. And, and I would say that um, we are very fortunate in this community that the foundations have been as supportive as they have. I have written and received grants um, myself from the local foundations, and I've only been back in town for four years. They're unbelievably <coughs> terrific people to work with and you bring them a good idea and they're very willing to listen but the most important thing is not to beg for money but what are you going to do with it after you have it can you turn that into some revenue can you find a way to leverage the assets that the community has already given you um, to make more revenue for your business which is your school district and, and I, I'm hoping that we can do that Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> As our curriculum grows and changes and with STEM and you talk about adding um, and keeping humanities in the mix, I think Midland Public Schools does a great job with that. Not only do we um, build relationships with the universities and our local companies, uh, which are very strong in the science and math engineering area, but uh, we also partner with the Midland Center for the Arts and the library and um, what we would consider our uh, places that really excel with the humanities. Um, we have terrific art departments here, music, drama. These students graduate, go on to, to great, great things. And it's not just humanities and it's not just STEM. Um, they blend so well. They learn so many skills. We know that um, art, music help develop the brain for math skills and uh, science skills and abstract thinking as they uh, are creative, so I think they're all intertwined, and I've heard the, the um, STEAM analogy many times, and I think we do a pretty good job of that right now, even with our IB and PYP and our curriculum. Everything overlaps, um, even our auxiliary um, classes and teachers. 
interact with the classroom teacher with our core subjects. So I think you, you can't separate them out. They all go together. Thank you. <coughs> Mary, your turn. Um, <coughs> I've, I've had schooling in STEM as part of my, my training. And I think um, it, it's really important that um, teachers are trained, well-trained for um, the STEM program and are confident in what they're presenting. I agree that there are um, many businesses and, and entities here in Midland that make um, teaching STEM all, 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 the much, uh, all the easier. I think that teachers already, at least at the high school level, um, are interacting one curricula one area uh, with another and another in terms of the humanities. I know um, pairing up chemistry with the different um, uh, glazes that they were doing in, in art class and, and uh, pairing up music with uh, understanding sound and physics. Those are all um, integrated as part of a STEM program uh, that's run well. And I think that we in Midland Public Schools can do that, no problem. Thank you. Here. Mary, you touched on it. STEM is not about creating a world of engineers and scientists because you have this program. STEM is to get young people ex enthused and excited about the world around them and how it works and what makes it work. To be enthused and excited and not fearful of mathematics because that explains a lot of things. To be able to take math and science and those understandings into the arts to understand how sound is generated, to understand how glazes work. Her points are spot on. The humanities, it's very proven by data that the, the music and arts amplification of art of, of the science side is, is very huge in the brain mechanics, et cetera. So this is not an exclusive process, one iota. This is not about training future engineers. Yes, there will be more future engineers because of, they'll be enthused about the subject. Yes, there will be more scientists because they are enthused about the subject. But there'll be many other students doing many other things <coughs> that will have a better understanding of the world, will have better math skills as a result and not fearful and much more enthused about those subjects than they are today. That's what STEM is about. Okay. Now we get to Brad. Whether you're talking about STEM or STEAM or STREAM, they are all wonderful curriculums and it is a different way to get kids excited about those subjects. And some kids that may not have been excited about them before. It breaks down a lot of barriers. Um, but also to get the most well-rounded education that we can for the children of this district is the absolute most important thing, whether it's the arts, music, all those things involved, that will create well-rounded students that they can go on and continue and excel beyond the Midland Public Schools. But obviously, yes, we have to have our relationships with all the universities that we are uh, helping enhance our relationship with them and enhancing our educational experience but we also have to establish partnerships with trade schools and other entities that put our children on the pathway to a career because a number of our students stay right here. And we have an equal obligation to them as well as the ones that are going off to the college and the universities. So I think it's imperative that we partner with those organizations for career fairs, co-op opportunities and recruiting strategies so that we are teaching to everyone in the district and giving them opportunities across the board. Thank you. Question four. We have to be a little bit briefer uh, because of our time constraints. We have 30 seconds. And we're going to start off with Michael. Mm -hmm. The children and youth of today are exposed to many stresses, bullying, and negative choices such as drugs. How can the schools help children and youth become healthy, whole individuals? One of the things that I would like to see us do is uh, have more uh, social workers, more counselors available to work with them. It's also something that I've seen in a particular situation that I'm in right now where we have teachers who are being assigned as caring adults to some students who are troubled uh, or having difficulties and uh, having some positive effect there. It'd be great to be able to have people from the community coming in and working with those individuals as well. Well, I certainly agree with Michael. That's something I would love to be able to do. I don't know if we can, but I think there's a great need for social workers in our schools. We end up asking our teachers to be those people. Um, but I think it's also important, it's very important to have rules. We have to teach certain things. We have to not allow bullying. 
bad behavior. We have to be adamant about those things because we have to teach these children, we encourage them and show them how to get along with other people. That's going to be imperative for them to get along in the world. That's our job. That's everyone's job. So I think we really have to stick to our rules. I have written on this topic. In fact, on my website, I have a fairly lengthy article that if some of you are having trouble sleeping, you might want to read. <laughs> um, it is, um, it, to me, it's a focus for youth sports. It's a focus for education. And it's something that I'm very um, much attuned to. And I, I would suggest that while I think counseling could be um, an answer, uh, <coughs> I think that you have to start w with the behavior before it ever gets to counseling. And I think that there are very good ways to do that. Thank you. Lynn, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I know that there are all these, these problems and it's been addressed in the schools and it will continue to be because these just don't go away. But I think the, um, the key is we need to work as a school, the community, and the families. A lot of these they are so intertwined and um, with that and with programming and uh, some of the, the individual schools have different um, ideas and ways that they uh, try to address these needs that we need to support that and um, respect that. Thank you. Mary? Um, speaking from experience working at Dow High, I know that they have mentoring programs one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, Midland High does a similar thing with um, taking those freshmen under <coughs> their wings with an upperclassman so that they know they have somebody they can turn to. Um, I think those programs are important. Um, I know promoting Dow High um, as a, as a pseudo-administrator um, and, and um, telling kids if we don't have a club or organization that you would want or feel comfortable being a part of, let us know and we'll create one so that they would have a sense of belonging and a sense of uh, direction. An impossible answer in 30 seconds. <laughs> um, that said, one big element no one has talked about is student confidence. How do, we Im how do we embed in kids the confidence that they can stand up to things? How do we make them confident in their own abilities? How do we make them confident that they can not only handle social situations, but they're confident in their academics, they're confident in other situations? Early interventions is a big answer to that. Uh, what we're doing at East Lawn with Judge Allen's programs, the community-based schools, of bringing different social work in, et cetera, for, these, uh, for economically at-risk kids has been hugely successful. And I think leveraging that and continuing those kind of efforts will take big chunks of this away. Not solve everything, but big chunks of it away. Thank you. Brad? I think that uh, teamwork between parents and also of the teachers and the people that are on the front lines and are involved with these kids every day communication, making sure that if there is a concern that they're getting the attention that they need. Um, Jerry talked about all the great things that are done at East Lawn Elementary. We have to learn from those and grow those to all the schools uh, because there are just so many learning factors there that we need to embrace to make sure that no kid is left behind. Thank you. And Scott. So the first thing I wrote down when you said that question was Shannon Blazy, um, who is spearheading a phenomenal effort uh, dealing with these very issues. Uh, our kids need to come to school and feel safe. They need to understand that there is a no, no bullying, uh, no tolerant bullying policy that we have in effect. Um, I think we do a good job as a whole conveying that to our kids, uh, but we just need to work on our interventions. And, and again, uh, just a shout out to Shannon Blazer. She, she has done a remarkable job to that end. Thank you. This is going to conclude the time that we uh, have given to questions. Th I want to thank you for all your thoughtful responses. Now we're going to come to the one-minute closing statement. At this time, you may wish to address any of the questions or add your comments to wrap up your positions and opinions on the various aspects of serving on the board for Midland Public Schools. So it's Yvonne's turn to begin this session. Well, I've been on this board, been serving on this board for the past five years. And as I said earlier, I have learned a tremendous amount in five years. And I think that at this point, I think I am in good condition to continue to be a member of the board. I think I can be a very good contributing member because of the things that I have learned. 
Um, I think this is a whole school system that works very well together. I'm a strong supporter of the Midland Public Schools and all the efforts made by everyone here. I think we've done an excellent job over the last five years. If you look at what we've been through and the things we've had to do, I think we've made some tough decisions, but some very good ones. I think we've managed to keep cuts away from the classroom, which is really one of the most important things as far as I'm concerned. We really have to keep our good, strong programming going. We've been able to do that. I want to continue to be able to do that. We all have to work together toward that, but we've shown that we can, and I would like to be continue to be part of that effort. Okay. In, in my view, the status quo isn't good enough, and I think that it has been the focus of quite a few people to try to make sure that um, that there is growth and that there is uh, a better experience for the students. But I, I agree with the, the whole concept that the students have to be the center and then the staff, and that as you get further out from that, that you need to refocus where you have been. My concern is that I'm not sure that we have um, enough independent thinking, and I'm not sure that we have the, the creativity um, or the experience from uh, outside of the education world th to help move um, the board along and move the district along. And so that's what I would hope to bring. Thank you. Sharon. Well, I've been proud to be a part of this, and it's been an honor for, for the last 15 years. And, um, and I'm still excited because education just keeps changing and Midland Public Schools, even as it's changed and had, had to change in all kinds of ways with the challenges in finances and um, increasing costs and, and aging buildings, we are at an all-time high for our student achievement. Um, our community is behind us with the bond. We're looking at the new STEM school and great updates in our uh, all our buildings as well as um, the curriculum and, and technology, we're, we're staying up where we need to be so that we can be competitive. And um, it was just an exciting time in education. And um, I would um, love to, to stay on the board. And it would be an honor to serve our children in our, in our district. Thank you. Um, I have a love and a passion for student and, and students in their education. <coughs> I've been in a position of hearing and feeling the heartbeat of our school district. I've experienced the firsthand needs of students, building staff, teachers, administrators, support staff, and voice concern by parents. I think one of the most pressing issues is that we need to have that connecti connectiveness with all the stakeholders um, to make sure that the monies are properly designated to the best meet the needs of students on a day-to-day -day basis um, and that we still need to be in the buildings um, feeling that pulse and making sure that we um, hear what what the needs are and then um, voice those concerns and make a, a unified decision in the best interest of our kids thank you Matt? getting through this, this district through the perfect storm has been quite the challenge mm -hmm. on economics but i'm very proud of where we've ended up we have a balanced budget Dow High had their best academic class ever last year. We have, we are still amongst the top 10 districts typified by Bloomfield Hills, Troy, et cetera, in our test scores and other results. Even though we are 20% less funded and five times as many at-risk students that they have. We have four times as many at-risk students as when you guys were in school here. Okay, that is a monumental challenge. So if we want our results to improve, We've got to make sure those kids succeed. And the early interventions, STEM, et cetera, are going to be the answers invigorating those kids and making it happen. So that's why I want to do the next phase of Midland Public Schools. It's all through the storm. I want to now be there when we grow it. And when I say grow, I don't mean numbers. I mean quality and effectiveness for all kids. Thank you. Red, your closing comment. I think what this uh, board and administration has done in the past is admirable, but I think now is the time to build upon those successes. We are the home to the world's largest chemical company. They have invested tirelessly in this community, Dow Diamond, Country Club, H Hotel, and on down the list. They have to recruit and retain the top talent in the world. They are, a glo they are competing on a global scale. We need to make sure that our education at the Midland Public, public Schools is right up there as a world-class public school system. 
That needs to be a deciding factor. When that young couple comes into town, they don't want to go see Dow Diamond. Maybe, maybe they want to go check out the schools first before they go catch a game. They want to check out and see where their kids are going to be, and we have a, an obligation to our community and everybody involved with that corporation to make sure that they're world class, so this has to be world class. Thank you. Scott. I think my fellow board members have done a great job laying out our accolades that we've achieved over the last four years as a district. Um, so to that end, I will say that our, our viewers have four big decisions to make regarding our district. Um, and I think that we have four very experienced, dedicated board members that are seeking re-election. And I just want to encourage those, those watching tonight to support our incumbents. And, uh, and please, everybody, whatever your choice is, make sure you get out and vote. Thank you. Thank you. And Michael. I think that uh, my background, uh, having had the, uh, the need to be a fiscally responsible superintendent and having to go through the, the idea of closing schools, um, that experience, that of being a principal, um, my commitment to education, uh, my commitment to continuing to be involved in education even after I've retired by working as a para at uh, Dow High, um, it's been a joy to do that. I really am in enjoying that, and if I'm elected, I have to give that up. But on the other hand, um, I do think that I can bring some new ideas, uh, some out-of-the-box thinking, uh, to the board and would love to uh, be able to have the opportunity to do that. Thank you. Thank you all. This concludes our forum for this evening. The, this forum will be broadcasted on the Midland Public Schools TV channel 190 every day at various times until Election Day. It will also be available on YouTube and the Midland Public Schools website. Our thanks to board candidates Lynn Baker, Brad Blasey, Mary Friedel, Yvonne Gorton, Michael Knopf, Scott McFarland, Jerry Wassman, and Kurt Yaki for participating in this forum. The Midland branch of AAUW and the Midland Area League of Women Voters appreciate that you have given voters an opportunity to hear your conversations about issues facing the Midland Public School. Voters, I want to remind you to please get out and vote on Tuesday, November 8th. And we want to extend a very special thank you to people who have made this program possible from the Midland Public Schools Instructional Media and Technology Center and the Midland Public Schools TV Channel 190, especially Billy Oliver. Thanks also to AAUW Midland Branch members, Jody Gardner, Sue McAllister, and Karen Sherwood from the Midland League of Women Voters, and Judy Donahue, Kim Steinke, Terry Townley, and Jane Worth who are members of both organizations and all have worked together to plan and sponsor this forum. We appreciate our live audience, our viewers. Please pass the word to your friends and neighbors that their votes are important. Thank you for watching. Remember this motto, it's my vote and I will be heard. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you.